This is part two of my partial fraction decomposition series. Um, in this one, we're going to look at when the denominators of these fractions are irreducible quadratic factors. So in other words, we will not be able to like break these down into linear factors from this point. So we are dealing with a quadratic factor here. So we'll need to use a slightly different approach as we did to part one. Now I'll put the link uh, in the description and also above for you to watch part one because that's where we did the type one where we're using linear factors. This one is going to be slightly different as we're using these quadratic factors. Let's dive in. Okay, as mentioned in the introduction, um, in video one, uh, we dealt with when denominators have a linear factors in them. So I just gave an example here. Here's one and we can just see clearly that there were two linear factors at the bottom. Uh, in the second example, it looks like there's a quadratic, but if you watch my video, you see that we can actually uh, factorize this into x minus two and x plus two. It's actually the difference of two squares. So therefore then again, reducing it down to linear factors. We use this approach here when we did those uh, partial fraction decomposition questions. So please work through video one before you try this one. So this one is type two, so um, slightly different. We're gonna be using this approach here where we have a over ax plus b plus bx plus c over cx squared plus d. Now, I'm in the next slide, I'm just gonna go through why we are actually using that compared to the other one, but these are the styles of questions that we're gonna work through. So if you wanna have a go at them, you already know this approach. Uh, pause the video, take a photo and work through, and we'll see if you're correct. Boy, that escalated quickly. Okay, I'm very briefly just going to explain why we use this format as opposed to the format that we used when we did linear factors on the denominator. If you're not interested in that, just skip forward to the first question and uh, work your way through. Uh, for those of you who are, basically it's just that we need a proper fraction. And a proper fraction is one that has the numerator degree less than the denominator degree. So therefore then, through, look at this example here, the denominator degree would be to x to the power of three. On the numerator, it is x1. So it just said it's got to be less than the what's on the denominator for this to be a proper fraction. So we can see here that when we multiply these two together, we would get a cubic term, uh, but therefore we would not get cubic if we even cross multiplied these. You can see that the highest power would be a squared there. Now I'm not saying there's a squared on the top here, but what we're saying is less than what would be on the denominator. So this format would give you this form here and the coefficients will work themselves out. Okay, example one, write as a sum of partial fractions and we can see that that a is a quadratic on the denominator. So we're going to use this format where we have a over and then we have our linear factor here, which is x minus one plus b x plus c all over the quadratic factor, which is the x squared plus four. Okay, now what we're gonna do is what we did in part one of this series is we are gonna multiply everything through by the denominator on both sides of this equation. So when we do that, we will end up with only two x plus three on the left-hand side. When we times the right-hand side, the x minus one will cancel in this first term, just leaving us with x squared plus four. And the bx plus c, don't forget, it's multiplied by all of this, so we've got to keep that in brackets, and the quadratic term will cancel in this one, leaving us with just x minus one. Now, the first part of this answer is very similar to what we did in part one of the series, where we're going to make a substitution, and we're going to choose x is equal to one. The reason being is, is when that is one, this whole term will come out to be zero, because the, one of those factors will be zero. So therefore then, if we substitute x is one into absolutely everything, we will get five is equal to five a, the last term, like I said, being zero. So therefore we can just simply establish that a is equal to one. So one of our results for the partial fraction, a is actually one. So I'll just go ahead and just put that in now here, one. Now, um, what do we do with the second part? Well, um, this is something different to what we've seen before. So this time I'm going to equate coefficients in order to find B and C, because it's a little bit trickier to find. So what I'll do is I found that this is the best way to do it. I'm going to multiply everything out, right, first of all, so you can just see. And I'm going to layer things up so we can keep them together. So there's a squared term here. And it wears there another squared term. Well, this would be bx times x. So there is another squared term there, right? That's important. 
Now let's just go ahead and multiply out the rest of this. So we've got a times four, so that's four a. Now that's a constant, so I'm just gonna put the constant over here as four a. Is there another constant that we can see? Yes, there is in the second bracket. So what we'll do is let's just continue going through the foil. So we've got bx times minus one, so that's minus bx, right? And we've got c times x, which is cx, so that's a positive cx. And then we have c times minus one, which is minus c. Now, the reason why I wrote it like that is because now I can just simply sum the columns up and uh, factorize at the same time. So I've got a plus b, close brackets, x squared, and then I've got my x terms. So I'm just gonna keep putting plus as a sum. And then what I'll do is I'll put c minus b in here, x, so that works out. And now I've got my constant, so this would be plus, and then we have, what, 4a minus c, right? So what I've done is I've just basically grouped together all sort of liked terms, so the coefficients of the liked terms. And all of this, don't forget, was equal to 2x plus 3. Now, why do, am I doing this? Well, it's because it's much, much easier to do this now to compare. If you see, look, there's a a plus b uh, is the coefficient of the x squared term. But if you look over to the left, there is no x squared term. So I can deduce then that a plus b must be equal to zero. And this is why it's so clever, because in the beginning of this question, I found a. So if a is one, therefore then b is minus one. And just very quickly like that, we have found b. So b is minus one. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and replace b with minus one right now in this answer here, so this is minus one. Now I don't wanna change this plus, right? I don't wanna do that, I just wanna just work out what's on the numerator of this second quotient, right? Um, and then we can also, because we've done all the hard work in the expansion now, I can also deduce that if C minus B is the X term, that is supposed to be equal to two. So let's just do that. That's so C minus B is supposed to be equal to two. And we just found that B is minus one. So therefore then uh, C minus minus one is C plus one is equal to two. So C is equal to one. And that is our final value that we need to know, which is C, which is equal to one. So let's get rid of that C and let's put A one. Now, um, in most cases, it would look a little bit weird leaving it like that because it's my, it's like minus x plus one. Uh, almost every textbook or every result you'll see is that they'll just start with a positive value and then subtract that one. So that's what I'll do, but that's what you'll see in the result. Okay, example two. So now you've seen the first one. Why don't you pause the video, have a go at this question, and then uh, watch the video and see if you got it correct. Um, write it as a sum of partial fractions. So what we'll do is we're gonna go straight in with this now. Um, this is gonna be A over. Gonna multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm doing this one a little bit quicker because we learned the skills on the first example. So the X plus ones will cancel here now. I'm uh, going to make a substitution here straight away. Gonna let x equal minus one. That'll get rid of this whole value here. So minus one will be minus three plus two is minus one is equal to minus one squared one, three a. So a is equal to minus one third. Therefore then uh, we found our a value. So when that happens, got to be a bit careful there that the a is a negative one third. So what will happen is this whole term will turn into a minus and be one third. Okay, so let's go ahead and do what we did on the first example and multiply this out. So we've got uh, 3x plus 2 is equal to, now I'm multiplying out, so it's going to be ax squared plus, uh, now that's two ways, so that'll be a constant, so I'll just put that over here for now. Okay, let's do bx times x, that's bx squared, so that'll go down here. And we have bx times one, so that's just bx. cx, which is another x term, and c times one, which is just c. Right, so it'd be plus c there. So when we group these together now, we can factorize as well. So we've got a plus b, close brackets, x squared. Let's uh, sum that to the, uh, coefficients of the x term, that's that one. And then we've got the 2a plus c, right, 2a plus c. Okay, so let's compare 
coefficients to the left hand side. So I said start with the a plus b. So that's also zero again in this question. So it's a plus b because there is no x squared term here. And we found that a is equal to negative one third. So negative one third plus b is equal to zero. So therefore b is equal to one third. Right. OK. And uh, that should be pretty straightforward now because we can use that in here because b plus c has to equal. Uh, that is the x term. So that's three. So that has to equal three here. And b, if b is one third, right, plus c is equal to three, which is going to be eight over three. Now, everything is out of a third. So what do we do here? You just be a bit careful here. So, so if you go back up here, that this is one and this is eight and they are both thirds. So you can bring down the third and have it factored on the outside there. So what do you think of partial fractions? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap the bell notification. Uh, if you haven't seen part one in the series, I recommend watching that or part three for the last and final type that we'll work with. See you next time.